Hello my loves, welcome to my channel. My name is Erin and this is the Apple Shed, my creative space. This week I am beginning a new phase of painting. Probably my first real dig in to painting since I moved to Tassie and to the Apple Shed. It's been all about organization and getting my products out and getting a market stall ready and getting myself into the shops in, in, the, in Hobart. But now it is time for me to dig down and really get into painting and I'm so excited about it. I wanna share with you how I'm beginning this process. It starts with play. First of all, I decided that I would pick up my gouache that I haven't used for a long time and just start to paint the scenery around me. And I've done that by really narrowing down and limiting my colors. Limiting colors work so well for flow, for creative flow, because you don't have to make choices. It really lowers the cognitive load. All you're doing is using the three colors or the one color that you've got in front of you. And I, I mix those colors down with either a black or a white, and that's it. And it just seems to be such a gentle, intuitive way to get into the zone, to get back into painting. Because as I've said before, when I don't paint every day or every week, I do start to get a bit antsy and feel like I need to ease myself back in. So I've done this by sitting at the window of my beautiful little apple shed tree house and just painting the hills around me. And it's, it's been a beautiful way to ease back into things. So there's creative play. The next way that I've begun to prepare for this phase of painting is to create somewhat of a mood board. Now I have a lot of, I'm very inspired at the moment. There's so much inspiration going on around me. There's things that I've got in the back of my mind that I've painted previously that I kind of want to make more of and explore. And then there's things around me. There's botanicals and flowers around me. There's the hills, the environment. There's, there's so much. And I find that by making a mood board, it allows me to call in, bring in all that inspiration and then distill it down. So here is the start of my mood board. I'm really focused in on, at the moment, on this light phthalo blue color, which is this one here. And what I've been doing is mixing it with Titan Buff. And what I'm obsessed with is the colors that it makes when you mix the two together. It's this kind of vintagey, greeny turquoise that I just, I'm really into. And this is the Athena Gods and Monsters ink here which is this one and uh, I just I love this color I love it so I'm bringing in things the first of all starting with the colors that really excite me so here are some moths that I painted a while ago but they're still inspiring me the colors the shapes it's still informing me so I have popped them back on here this I was flicking through some uh, country living magazines and came across this planter and it the, just I just I just loved it so I'm bringing it together I don't know where it's going to go I don't know if it's really going to add to what I'm creating but I felt like I needed to put it in here and mixing the Athena with the it's this one here what does she call it it's Jane Davenport tattoo ink that's what it's called Athena Gods and Monsters with Tattoo Ink. And um, there it is there as well. It really works. It's really, it's really doing something for me. Again, this is a bird that I painted quite some time ago, but 
it's, I feel like I needed to bring it in to this mood board and make more of it and explore this kind of illustration a bit more. And these are the shapes around me that are, that I'm interested in right now. And again, the point of that is to almost limit myself because there's so many ideas and there's so much inspiration that it's like creative overflow and it gets a little bit, it just gets into overwhelm. So the mood board is there just to say, hey, this is how we're gonna focus right now. We've got a whole lifetime to focus on all the other million things that you're excited about. Let's just, let's just look at these patterns. Let's look at these colors. Let's explore these botanical marks and stay within this realm just for now. So there's play, creative play, and then a little bit of mood boarding to get in the zone. And then I began my first painting, which you can see here. And I'd love to take you in a little bit into the process of how I started because it's quite free and it's quite loose and that's that makes me really happy. It's not complicated. I basically just started with the colors that are on my mood board that are really inspiring me right now. And I begin by breaking the ice. I just start just, just covering the canvas with line, with that color, brushing it across. It's, it's more of an emotion. It's more of a feeling like embracing the canvas and embracing the color and getting into the zone of, of beginning this, this new phase. Here is my palette. Now I wanted to share with you the paints that I'm using to start this series at the moment. First of all, these paints here, these Liquitex Heavy Body Acrylics, uh, they have a series called the Muted series. You've got Muted Pink, Muted Turquoise, uh, Muted Violet, Muted Green. And I adore these colors, honestly really love them, really love the tone. I'm also using, I all oh, my favorite paints are golden and I've started buying golden open acrylics so that, you know, they, they, they don't dry up so quickly. Yellow ochre, use all the time. And obviously what I do is try and buy my colors that I know I love in different supplies. These Sennelier um, oil sticks are just, why you you know with a with a tool like this you have to be loose you have to be loose that's what it's made for so it's these are a beautiful addition to my to my to my palette so if you look at one of my paintings here the gift of time you can see those colors here you've got the muted pink and the muted violet the indigo and uh, even the thalo light blue the ochre the beautiful ochres, warm yellows, warm bright yellows. These are still my colors and I love them. See them here in the masked owl as well. Those same signature muted pink and muted violet and indigo. There's a lot of white mixed in there. The brushes I use are basically a mix of not expensive brushes at all all. Um, I, I have to admit I don't treat my brushes too too well. I wish I did but I don't. So these Montmartre and, um, are really super useful uh, for starting the backgrounds and all that kind of thing. And then I've got these um, Art Basics. They're all synthetics, nice and stiff. Most used are these Neef um, Taclon brushes. 
inexpensive and um, I, re I really like these actually. They're great brushes. I, these are my most used. The oval, the, the flat and the round with a point. My most used brushes. And I like to get myself a nice white, titanium white that I mix with everything. I'm a big white mixer. Other important thing that I like to use is Liquitex airbrush medium. So if I'm doing backgrounds and I mix, mix the acrylics together, then I'll throw in some airbrush medium just to get it, um, uh, just, just to make it easier to spread, you know, make it less viscous and more spreadable. There's a long way to go. This is just the initial blocking out of what this painting is going to be. You can see how I come in here and start blocking out the shapes. It's not going to look like this when it's finished. I love these shapes here. These are like my signature botanical shapes that I return to again and again. Blocking out the Elstra mirror. And the leaves. And you can see how the fast line of the ochre stick in the background just gives it that extra life behind it. God, I love the mess. I love the mess. I love it. All right, my loves, it is time for me to go as I have much to do today to prepare for my market stall tomorrow. I wish you a beautiful creative week ahead. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And if you have any comments or questions, please put them in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. Bye for now.